Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hello friends, checking in on USMJ names. We got a whole bunch to look at. Put out the Canadian MJ video yesterday. We're going to look at C-Web, KSHB, IIPR, ACRG, MPX, IAN, GTII, GWPH, CURA, TRUL, and BEV, MRMD, CVS, IMM, what's that one? MedMen, MMEN, LHS. Lots of names to be looking at. We're looking on the weekly time frames to start off because the number one thing I want to identify is who is close to all-time highs. That's who the bulls want to be focusing on because as we know from 2017, 2018, that when we have individual names at all-time highs, that's the best time and the most fun to be a bull and the gains quickly add up. So we want to see who's most likely to hit all-time highs in 2019. Again, dependent on the overall market, but if oil and the S&P 500 give us a weekly higher low and higher high and change this weekly trend, a lot of these names are going to be positioned well to see those all-time highs. So we're going to start it off here with C-Web, who is close to all-time high, 1870. And again, we're in an area with a lack of resistance on the weekly time frame. We had a tightening equilibrium break bullish, where we had the low, all-time high, higher low, lower high, higher low, bull break. We are extended, and the daily time frame has not really started to consolidate. The bulls aggressively bought the dip on Friday from profit-taking. This is one of those names where you have to be cautious because the swings are significant. 1775 is where we opened, and the low of the day was down at 1661. That's well over a 5% pullback. And again, the I play with smaller capital on these less liquid names that are harder to play with larger capital and that move greater percentage swings due to their lack of liquidity and lack of market makers due to the fact that they're not on a major exchange like the NYSE or the NASDAQ. So healthy daily consolidation is underway. We're looking for a higher low to form compared to 1228. That was our last higher low. The bulls have tons of space. We know a daily higher low is going to form eventually. And we want to see an hourly trend change to mark the daily higher low being established. So with the action on Friday, we have the low of the pullback, the high of the hourly bounce at this point, which is up at 1741 resistance. And what we have to see is a higher low. Get my paintbrush. Higher low and then a continuation move on the hourly to change this trend and to give us the indication that the daily higher low has been established. So if we do not change the hourly trend with a higher low and a higher high, we're still going to be looking for consolidation on the daily time frame. But this is one of those names where once we form a daily higher low, we are going to be looking for bulls to buy that dip. Because if we see a break of 1788, we're just a 5% move away from the all-time high and potential blue sky breakout. Keep an eye on C-Web Q1 2019. Let's just say all of 2019 because the bulls are positioned so close towards those all-time highs. KSHB, another one of those names. Look at that weekly volume. That is absolutely massive, and it has led to a clear bull break of a lot of key resistance levels. This is another name where once we cleared 693, the next resistances we have are 740 and 851, the all-time high. No resistance, very limited resistance at this level. When we consolidate, we will absolutely look for a weekly higher low to form and a daily higher low to form. This is one of the names that just has not consolidated. Look at this block of volume leading into earnings and then following earnings. And we're watching for healthy daily consolidation. A pattern that stands out to me is every single day, we have a higher low now for 12 days in a row. So when we lose that pattern, that means daily consolidation is underway. So the first support level is 665. If that breaks, we're looking for a daily higher low to form in the lower $6 range. And again, if we see a higher low and higher high on the daily, we're going to be looking right back up towards that all-time high. KSHB, another name, we're anticipating that it's going to dual list, or I should say get uplisted in the U.S. on a major exchange at some point this year, and it's positioned well to be looking at those all-time highs if the market strength continues. IIPR, another one. So the weekly bounce is significant at this point. We know that we're likely to have to consolidate for a higher low before we get back to that all-time high level, but it's not far away at this point. 10%, even less than that, 8%, and we've got an all-time high. 
So the daily time frame saw a significant bounce with the rest of the market. Little bull flag of consolidation attempting here, but we have to see a break of this double top, 52.49 and 52.43. That's the range to be watching, at least 52.49 to 50.16. This is another one with significant percentage swings from the high of Wednesday to the low of Thursday. That was a pullback of about four plus percent. So that's the tight sideways range. If we see a break of 50.16, further daily consolidation is coming for a higher low to have to form. If we get the bull break of 52.49, 53.98 is the next level. And again, the all-time high proximity is right there. And we're looking for the bulls to hit all-time highs this year. If the overall market bulls cooperate, which they are currently doing, we need that weekly higher low and higher high. At this point, you've been watching my videos all weekend. You know that that's the most important factor, as I've mentioned it 800 times weekly oil and sp s&p 500 trend changes will be will have this sector positioned very well acrg another one with that weekly equilibrium playing out as anticipated where we had the high all-time high all-time low the very significant bounce had us looking for just a lower high to be set because the bulls exhausted themselves to the upside we need a higher low to form on the weekly this is going to be an awesome weekly equilibrium to be watching into Q1 2019. So our lower high is now set 2508. We're going to look for a higher low to form and looking at the daily consolidation here, healthy pullback so far. And we're going to look for a daily continuation. Actually, let's say, let's say that at this point, we close at the low of the day with bearish momentum into the next week. And the size of the pullback at this point means that when we do bounce, we're likely to not just see a continuation move with a higher low and then move to all-time highs. We're likely to see a lower high form on a daily bounce attempt and either a tightening range or a lower high and lower low, which it would indicate that the weekly higher low is then looking to form. Ideal scenario for the bulls is to hold $18, visually speaking. That's just a level that would keep the bulls in control and have that be a healthy higher low. And then we would see a bounce and make our way back to that level, but not anticipating a weekly break unless there's some kind of news event, but likely to see this weekly pattern tighten up uh, into late February, early March, I would say. So this is one to be watching on the back burner because it still needs to develop a bit. But again, all-time high proximity, certainly close. MPX, January 15th, we have the vote for the merger to be watching between MPX and IAN. There's still a small discount on the MPX shares if it does go through, and we're watching the potential of a cup and handle pattern on the daily time frame. But right now, the weekly time frame is tightening up with this key resistance test, and it's this left side of resistance at 98 and 99, healthy consolidation, inability to break resistance, healthy bull flag attempt here. You can see the volumes picking up the last three days with a tight range. Volume precedes price. Let's see if these bulls can break... 97, 98, 99, one psychological, break all four of those resistance levels in one day, we will likely see a daily volume spike, and that will confirm the bull break to have us looking up at the next resistance of 106, 6% away. I'm very interested in MPX this coming week. I do believe that it's more likely than not that we get a bull break of these levels with that vote coming up and that vote anticipated to pass, and then we'll see the merger of shares between MPX and IAN. IAN is a little bit less bullish. It's still a tightening weekly range here as well with our low, high, higher low, and unable to break resistance at this point. This is a nice equilibrium that's still intact. Most names broke their equilibrium without giving us a nice tightening range, and here we have a nice tightening range forming. So our lower high was set at 614. We're looking to pull back and form a higher low compared to 475. Bulls have a lot of space to work with. If we break 578, the low of consolidation at this point, we know further pullback is coming and to be patient, to wait for the bulls to shift that momentum. And if we see a break of 614, that tells us very brief consolidation and bulls are ready to continue their strength. So keeping an eye on IAN as well. And this is going to be one of our top plays for the USMJ sector and not necessarily due to positioning with proximity to all time highs as that's not in the picture at this point. But just in terms of being a major player, once these two companies merge, it's going to be, you know, they're going to be the top tier, tier one names of the U.S. sector, where right now we have GWPH as the, the main OG sector leader, just in terms of size and where it's listed. IIPR is listed on the NYSE. It was the first marijuana IPO on the NYSE. So they have access to broader capital with these markets. But we're looking at TRUL, MedMen, IAN as some of the major players 
fundamentally speaking and with their size and their revenues. So those are on our top watch for 2019 as well. So once this merger goes through, as we are anticipating, it'll be one solid company and we'll be watching the progress from there. GTII. So GTII increasing bull volume on the weekly. This is a name where we don't have a weekly trend change. It's a lower high, lower low pattern from the all time highs. And we're, this bounce is coming straight from the lows. There's a lot of individual names that formed a weekly higher low and then broke resistance. That's a trend change. This is just breaking resistance and it's increasing the odds of a trend change, but we have to confirm this move with a higher low and higher high. Had we held this support of 1057, had a higher low and then broken the lower highs, that would be a weekly trend change. But because we dropped to a lower low before the bounce took place, we still need proving of that continuation move to change that weekly trend. So the daily time frame getting a bit overextended. This is another one of those names that's seen a higher low on the daily every single day for the last nine days in a row. That pattern changed on Friday with the break of 1587. So healthy daily consolidation is underway. When we change the hourly trend back in favor of the bulls, then our daily higher low is established. And if these bulls can turn around and break 16... 31 and 1643 on Monday that will change the hourly trend back in their favor and our new daily higher low will be established remember some of the Canadian names have already formed little daily higher lows and seen continuation that's what every single individual name wants to see happen and GTII is working on a potential bull flag at this point and is going to be looking for that continuation so this is going to be one of the major USMJ names that we watch as well but we need to see a bit more follow through on that weekly time frame to confirm that trend change. GWPH, this is the major name in the sector. It's seeing the V-shaped bounce with the S&P 500. The biotech sector is a big influence here on GWPH because it's in that sector. And the biotech sector has seen a huge bounce the last three weeks as well. So again, this is another name where the bounce is coming from the low. So we're not changing the weekly trend. We need the weekly higher low and higher high to confirm that trend change. At this point, the daily chart's overextended. We're watching for healthy consolidation. And if we break 122.25, the daily inside bar, if we break that bearish on Monday, healthy daily consolidation will be underway. Solid blocks of volume here for the bulls the last week. And resistance is 128 and 131.31 as the first two resistances to be watching. And bulls attempting a little daily higher low here already at 116.94, but not much consolidation over this multiple week run. So we do need a little bit more pullback in my opinion, and we'll see if this daily inside bar does break bearish or not. C-U-R-A. So a weekly bounce here is occurring without dropping to a lower low. So this is another name that held support. 512 was the low, then we held 543. And the most important resistance on this chart is $9. If we can't break $9, it's just a weekly lower high. We'll look for the higher low and the tightening weekly range into February once we do top out on the daily. But at this point, we don't have any clear indication that the daily has topped out. There's another bull flag. Again, individual names are seeing these bull flags with ideal consolidation. Multiple inside bars broke bullish. This was a nice signal. Some people in our chat room are watching this one where we had the clear lower highs and higher lows on the hourly. The bull break happened first thing Friday. Very convincing volume. Again, the volume is the prove it indicator. That's how we knew to believe these bulls because it was the highest hourly bull volume candle that we had seen on this entire run aside from the move straight off the bottom. So to see a tightening range and then that kind of volume behind the break, you know it is a convincing bull break. The initial signal was 770 breaking and then 778 confirmed it and really nice follow through from those levels to see another 10% of upside for those bulls. And that was the wrong math. We didn't get 10% from that bull break, but it was a solid move where from the bull break to the high, it was up to 6% or so. So a solid bull break. Our new daily short-term key support level is the low of that consolidation of 738. And if the bulls can break 818, we're looking up towards that $9 resistance. So beautiful bull flag on yet another name. And there's no Canadian or USMJ names that we're looking at right now out of what I've covered in these two videos, which at this point is probably 20 plus names that are giving red flags. There's no high bear volume, red flags pulling back a lot. And that's ideal for the entire sector. T-R-U-L. This is another one where the weekly time frame is coming off the lows. So we know the weekly chart is likely to just form a lower high. We need the higher low and higher high to change the weekly trend. Daily time frame topping out a little bit. We had resistance up at 1216, unable to break it on Friday. Bulls only made their way up to 1190, 
So we're watching a bit of a tightening range here on the daily chart. Most important short-term support, we established a little low down here. So essentially we've been within this range between 1087 and 1216 for the last eight trading days. And that's what we're watching for, for a break. Bulls have to break 1216 to see continuation and a bear break would be 1087. And then we'd have to pull back and look for the weekly higher low to form if we do break 1087 as support. NBEV. This is one that we're watching for a tightening weekly range as well. We have a resistance up here, support down at 303, a lower high at 690, a higher low at 471. That's the most important weekly range that I'm watching. And we're looking at this resistance of 690. Can we break that level and see continuation of this weekly trend change? Or do we reject and see a tightening weekly range into February? And the daily time frame for details shows us some upper wicks of profit taking. So if we see a bear break of 610, the low of Friday, which is a daily inside bar, if that breaks bearish on Monday, then we're going to look at the odds increasing that the weekly time frame is going to set a lower high and then pull back and see a tightening range into February. So that's what we're watching first thing, the daily inside bar and whether or not 610 can hold. Resistance is 642 and 645. And then the most important level, 690 on the weekly chart. MRMD, this is one that I had not looked at in a while, but just a bounce to set the weekly lower high. Bulls have to form a weekly higher low. So the weekly consolidation with an inside bar is already underway to a certain degree, but this is a, a potential glimpse into what these other names need to do that have not started consolidating on their weekly yet. But when they do, if we pull back here, we have to hold the low and then we have to see continuation to confirm this weekly trend change. So the most important support is 235. We need a higher low compared to that level. And then after 235, actually forget 235, we need to hold 235. And then bulls need to break 411 as the next resistance. So looking at more details on the daily, we can see we topped out at 411. We're trying to establish a base of support. And at this point for the hourly time frame to change the trend in favor of the bulls, convincingly there's our double bottom of 333 and 334 and if the bulls can see a break of 370 we will convincingly have our daily higher low established and the bulls will try and make their way back to 411 but at this point it's a sideways four-day range if it breaks bearish weekly consolidation clearly underway and if it breaks bullish we'll watch for the potential of a tightening daily equilibrium into next week CVSI, love this weekly chart. I'm going to continue pointing it out until it breaks because it's a beauty of an equilibrium with our high, low, lower high, actually up there at 654. Higher low at 333, lower high, higher low, and now a weekly inside bar. So again, how this weekly inside bar breaks next week is going to shift the odds of which direction this weekly equilibrium is more likely to break. It's a higher risk, higher reward entry if you're going to act on that signal alone. A more conservative trader would wait for a break of 560 for the bulls or a break of 380 for the bears. A more aggressive trader is going to act on a break of 475 for the bulls and then just ensure that we get follow through behind it. And a more aggressive bear is going to act on a 432 support break. So the daily time frame we can see is tightening up. We topped out at the bull move on 489. We established a base of support at 432. And now we have a tightening daily range. This is a good one to be watching into next week because if this little daily equilibrium breaks as we are anticipating it will, again, that's going to shift the odds of what's most likely to happen on the weekly break, which we're going to anticipate that weekly break is going to occur sometime in February. But this is a tight daily pattern. And I'm going to write down CVSI right now because that's one that I want to be watching the first few days of this coming week. MedMen. So MedMen's a tightening weekly pattern. We did break resistance, but insignificant. So we're calling that a double top at 478 and 486, just because we rejected from that level after a quick bull break, we pulled back. This is an equilibrium as well. The low of 311, the high of 478, higher low at 480 or 346. Double top, we'll call it. And now another higher low at $4. So the hourly trend change here back to the bulls, let us know that our daily higher low was established. We bounced and set just a lower high. Then we had a higher low and bull break happened on Friday by getting over that resistance level of 428. So 428 breaking told us the daily higher low was being established. And now we have a tightening range and the bulls need to see a break 
of 486 to see a clear shift in momentum and a clear trend change. And this is one to be watching as well this coming week because it's time for the bulls to prove it. Can we see some increasing bull volume Monday, Tuesday, and a break of that resistance to give a clear signal that the trend has changed and shifted to the bulls now? LHS. This is another tightening range on the daily time frame. Don't freeze on the last chart. 113 was resistance. We got up to 114, so we'll call that a double top by one penny. 72 cents was support. Topped out at 113, higher low at 81, double top, and now we're looking for another higher low compared to 81. So this is a tightening pattern as well. And we have to see an hourly trend change to indicate the daily higher low has been established and to look back up at those resistances and on the hourly time frame to change this trend at this point. Have to hold 99, which the bulls tried to do at the end of Friday. Have to see a bull break of 105. That gives us a higher low and a higher high, changing the hourly trend and giving us our daily higher low, which would be at 99 if that does indeed play out. So this is another one to be watching because if we break 113 and 114, look at the lack of resistance. We would then be looking up at a gap fill at 118 and then the next price resistance at 140. So I love names that are in tightening patterns. And then once the break occurs, there is a lack of resistance in the direction of the break ideally. And that's when we get the most follow through, ensuring that there's volume behind it, of course, as well. So that's what we're watching. There's a lot of names to be watching. Again, most daily charts are giving us nice higher lows and some of them giving us continuation. Everybody's at different points on these trends. Keeping in mind, again, as I keep reminding all these videos, that this is occurring in a vacuum of strength for the S&P 500. The S&P 500 has held up extremely well for about two and a half, three weeks on this bounce, and that is helping the entire MJ sector to do the same. I am very curious to see if SPY daily consolidation, which will be healthy initially, if that's going to give further incentive for consolidation on the daily timeframes for the majority of these charts. Top watch for me, CVSI, MPX with that daily cup and handle possibility leading into the vote on the 15th. That's my number one watch. And then we're going to be watching everybody else. KSHB needs some healthy daily consolidation, but you better believe there's a lot of bulls sitting on the sidelines waiting for that daily consolidation for an entry possibility on KSHB after such a strong move over the past few weeks. So I hope you have a great rest of your week. Again, try and narrow it down. Obviously with the two videos that I put out, there are tons of tickers to be watching in this space and have a game plan established for everybody. These smaller OTC names that again are less liquid and see bigger percentage moves because of that fact they are swing positions. They are swing traders. Unless you're using small capital, it's really hard to enter and exit for day trading these names. So I would suggest swing trading or long-term game plans on all of these names. And then once they uplist, if they do, they're like KSHB, we'll get more liquidity, more opportunity for day trading, more volume. And that's something we're keeping an eye on in this space as well, as it is still in its infancy. We have not seen these names mature to large capital markets. And any institutions trying to get into these names are struggling big time. You know, if it's hard to enter a six-figure position, it's hard to enter a seven-figure position like some of these larger institution or head funds are going to be looking to do. So that's why my feelings that the USMJ percentage gains are going to outpace the large cap names that have already hit the spotlight in the Canadian side of things. And it's due to the lack of liquidity and knowing that once big, big money wants to come in, it's really going to surge this lack of liquidity into some significant bull moves. So always watching the political landscape as well, because that's going to be the catalyst for the USMJ space when we do finally get these changes, keeping in mind that it's not going to be a light switch flipping overnight, and it's likely going to be slow and steady steps, which we have been seeing for the past couple of years, and we're anticipating to continue going forward. We'll see you soon. Do good things out there. Have a great weekend. I'm going to share with you all my trading trinket good luck charms that I keep on my trading desk and travel around with me. The first is an elephant from one of our members. I believe he sent that from Thailand. Second is your standard moose when you need the bulls to show up. Then I got Bert. Gave that to my grandfather 20 years ago. And the real winner, this is a gold-plated horseshoe that my grandfather got. He was in the Battle of the Bulge, but this is from a French farmer who let them stay in his barn overnight. And he put gold plating on it and then gave it to him on his way out. So that's what I use for good luck. 
and I highly suggest that you all have little trinkets for your own. Can't hurt. <laughs>